Most desktop PCs tend to be quite large. Even smaller PCs like this Dell Small Form Factor Office PC is still quite big and bulky and not very portable. Also, let's not forget to mention the noise it makes at load. So in this video, I'm going to attempt to build a tiny PC setup, including the monitor and peripherals. Let's start with the PC. Here we have the Melee or Melee or Myla or whatever it is, Quieter 4C mini PC sent out by Melee themselves. In the box, we get an instruction booklet, some useful information about the heat dissipation of the device because this is completely silent and fanless. Then we have the PC itself, which is absolutely tiny, being able to fit entirely into my hand. And it also has this bumpy texture on top. More on that later. Then in the box, we also have the mounting bracket for a monitor and a power cable, which is not a brick, unlike some brands, which helps keep the setup really small and compact. Just for size reference, the entire PC is smaller than my mouse. On the front of the device, we have a power button, followed by a USB 3.2 Gen 1, a USB 3.2 Gen 2, and a USB 2.0. On the back, we have a USB-C, which can connect to a monitor, a headphone jack, a micro SD card slot, two HDMI 2.0 ports, so you can connect up to three monitors to this PC, a reset CMOS button, a USB power input, and gigabit ethernet. On the other side, we have just a Kensington lock. For heat dissipation, the top cover is basically the heat sink made out of this high conductivity plastic. You will notice that there's this pattern, which is basically loads of pyramids, which helps increase the surface area and thus the cooling. The bottom casing, I believe, is made from metal, which helps with heat dissipation and also gives a premium feel to the device. You can attach this PC to a monitor with the included vase amount, like many other mini PCs out there. But with this PC, it looks and feels a lot better due to this slim design. This allows you to completely hide your PC for clean setups. Even by mini PC standards, the Melee Quieter 4C is small. It measures in at 13.1 by 8.1 by 1.83 centimeters. That's 5.2 by 3.2 by 0.7 inches. Additionally, they say it only weighs 203 grams, but mine weighs 219. Most mini PCs are a lot bigger than this, as shown by this picture. Unfortunately, there did have to be some compromises to get the PC this small, mainly in terms of the performance. Since there is no fan, the default TDP is just 8 watts which does leave it lagging behind compared to other Intel N150 mini PCs. So for specs, this PC has an Intel N150 4-core processor with a TDP of 8 watts. The base clock of a CPU is only 0.8 GHz, although it does have a turbo up to 3.6 GHz. It has 16 GB of LPDDR5 4800 MHz RAM, which is really good, although to keep the heat low and the PC small, it is soldered on, so it's not replaceable. It also has a 512GB PCIe 3.0 NVMe SSD, which should be plenty fast for this PC. The graphics are the classic Intel UHD integrated graphics, which is to be expected in a PC like this, and it also has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and Ethernet. Getting the Melee Quieter 4C setup is super easy. We just connect the power, the HDMI cable to our monitor, and a keyboard and mouse. For everyday tasks like watching 4K video on YouTube, the Melee 4C handles it very very well with just a few drop frames. General web browsing and document writing works perfectly on this mini PC. For gaming, we can't expect too much from this mini PC as it literally only has an Intel N150 CPU with no dedicated graphics. Furthermore, the TDP is just 8 watts compared to the alternatives which have upwards of 25 watt TDPs. If you buy this PC, you are definitely paying a premium for the fact that it is tiny and fully silent because this PC costs a fair bit more than the alternatives, which are cheaper and more powerful, but also bigger and noisier. Similar devices currently cost around $169, whereas the Melee Quieter 4C costs $192 or £211, and that's not much more considering it has a better design. So how well does it perform? Well in Geekbench we got a single core score of 835 and 1607 for the multi-core score, which is not the best, but it's not too bad either. During the test we can see that we were using about 8 watts for the CPU and the temperature did get pretty hot at about 75 to 80 degrees Celsius, but it was a pretty hot day in the UK, especially inside with no air conditioning. Cinebench multi-core score was at 1703 and the single core score was at 751, which puts it about on par with the Nye 74650, which is not the best. 3D Mark has a relatively low score of 302 for the graphics and 1097 for the CPU. That's generally fine for everyday tasks, but definitely not ideal for gaming. On the bright side, the SSD was pretty fast at 3342 for read speed and 2874 megabytes per second for write, and that's using PCIe 3.0 x4. 
It's definitely not the fastest SSD in the world, but it's definitely not the slowest either. This means we can get about 18.3 FPS in GTA 5, 1366 by 768 at normal settings, with quite a bit of stuttering and graphical glitches. But you know, we can't really expect too much from a PC with just an N150 inside. Older and less demanding games is where this PC can be very useful. Katamari Reroll at 1080p gave us 24 FPS, which is better, but still not great. However, it can run Crisis at around 25 FPS, which is not too bad. One of the things I always wanted to do was to make a mini arcade cabinet powered by a mini PC running emulators, and you can definitely do that on this PC. Dreamcast emulators work fine at the maximum FPS allowed, and you can go up to about the PS2 emulators before you notice any real drops in FPS. There is actually a way to get more performance from this PC. We're just going to go into the BIOS and increase the TDP up to 15 watts. Now we get a single core score of 1047 and a multi-core score of 2449 in Geekbench. But now we are thermal throttling due to the UK being too hot currently. So I turned the TDP down to 12 watts, where we still see an increased Geekbench score of 1031 and 2362, and that's a 23 and 47% increase respectively. Our Cinebench multi-core score has gone up to 1972 points, compared to just 1703 before, and 3 d Mark has gone up from 302 for graphics to 426, and 1097 to 1541 for the CPU. In GTA at the same settings we now get 30.4 FPS which is great and it's actually made the game somewhat playable. Well, kind of. Katamari Reroll has also increased from 24 to 31.8 FPS. Just by increasing the TDP we have really unlocked more performance here, but obviously at a cost of the PC being hotter. Other games can now also be played, like Minecraft at 1080p, 8 chunks with 11.9 FPS. That's honestly pretty bad, but it's definitely an improvement if you play the game with 8 watts. Shadow of the Tomb Raider at the lowest setting 720p achieved 10.5 FPS on average, which is not playable, but it's to be expected. Resident Evil 3 did surprisingly well with 21.7 FPS at lowest setting 720p. Fallout 3 wouldn't start, yet Fallout 4 did, and also performed quite well, all things considered. It was at the lowest setting 720p and achieved 23.8 FPS on average. Really easy to run games like Half-Life and Stardew Valley were great and stayed at the FPS cap which is like 60 or 100 FPS. Okay so now that the review is pretty much done, let's change this monitor because we don't need such a large monitor for our mini PC setup. For our new monitor we have a 5 inch IPS screen with a massive resolution of 854 by 480 Yes, 854 by 480 it's basically just a screen, but it's also connected to this HDMI adapter board, so we can plug our HDMI cable into this monitor. I'm going to use a piece of cardboard to use as a stand. And the great thing about this is that I can power it straight from the PC's USB port for a much cleaner setup. Now I'm going to change the keyboard, because let's be real, when you're playing games you only need like 6 keys max. So I've got this mini programmable keyboard thing from China. Now we can change the rotation of the display. We need to decode the Chinese instructions, and after probably downloading some viruses, we get to a command prompt window for like 3 minutes without doing anything. Eventually the program opens and I can change the keys to Q, W, E, A, S and D. I wonder if these keycaps can come off. Oh okay they do, so let's change these to some useful keys. And then we're going to put on W, A, S, D and E. And now we can play CS2, although there is a slight problem. I just realised. Kind of don't have a spacebar, so we can't jump. So after finally getting some kills in the game, oh! I can barely even see the players in the game. Oh, this guy. Yes! <laughs> I turned the Q key into a spacebar, and it was surprisingly not too bad of an experience with 35.4 FPS on average. I mean, at 854 by 480, you would expect some decent FPS. Actually, this game is quite playable, surprisingly enough. We just got three kills in a row. But the same can't really be said for some other games, because they didn't even start. It's definitely something to do with the weird resolution of this display. Shadow of the Tomb Raider would crash at the settings menu, and the same would happen with GTA 5, Fallout 4, and Resident Evil 3. On Crisis, I couldn't even see the game properly because it was like cut off. However, Katamari Reroll worked, even though it said it was at 720p. Here we got 102.1 FPS on average, which is way higher than the 31.8 we got before, so I guess that's one benefit of playing at such a small resolution. Minecraft also works well with 26.3 FPS on average at 8 chunks. It basically doubled our FPS from before. The emulators like Jet Set Radio on the Dreamcast and Resident Evil 4 on the PS2 still works perfectly on this tiny screen, so you could actually make like a retro style mini arcade machine with this screen and the PC combo. Overall, the Melee Quieter 4C is a great tiny mini PC as long
long as you set your expectations correctly. It is by no means a gaming PC, but the fact that it can actually play some games is pretty cool. With this PC you're not really paying for the performance, but the fact that the PC is tiny and fully silent. I can see how this would be useful to take around with you and just plug into any display because it's smaller than any laptop out there. Furthermore, it's great if you want to use it as a server or a media player, without any excess noise because it can pretty much be hidden anywhere. Thanks for watching.